All right, what is up, Utes fans? This is Joseph back with the Utah Utes Football Digest. And I am sorry I haven't been making a lot of content this week. I know it is conference championship week. I know we made the conference championship in a wild way. I'll cover a bit of that today. And it, I am just as excited as you guys are. I've just been on a work vacation type of trip. And so I haven't had a ton of time to make videos. But I am excited to make this one for you guys and, you know, go into detail on some of the matchups and all the details about the conference championship. It should be a great time. Uh, what we'll talk about today is how we got into the conference championship, kind of recap how that all broke down. Uh, also, I want to talk about Dalton Kincaid. I'm sure you guys already know what I'm referring to, but I want to talk a little about that. And then finally, we'll talk about the actual matchup with USC and what I think is going to happen in that game. And outside of that, this should be a fun one. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and dive in. Go Utes. All right, and so the first thing that we're going to talk about is going to be Dalton Kincaid. Um, you know, this this topic for me gets me a little annoyed. Honestly, I it gets me pretty annoyed at how wildly exceptional Dalton Kincaid's season has been and how they are not recognizing him on a national stage for God knows why. I mean, honestly, it's a little ridiculous. Just to give you guys an idea of what we're talking about here at Dalton Kincaid, number one in total yards, number one in total yards per game among tight ends, number one in receptions per game among tight ends, number two in touchdowns for tight ends, and number two in receiving yards for, or receptions for tight end. The other thing is he only played in 12 games. That's why his yards per game is so damn high. I mean, the guy has been nothing short of exceptional. It, this one really gets me, guys. You look at the three guys that made it, and I'd say when you look at them, you know, it's Sam Laporta, Brock Bowers, and Michael Mayer. Uh, so that's Sam Laporta, Iowa. Uh, Brock Bowers, Georgia, and Michael Mayer, Notre Dame. And to me, when I look at this list, that's, that's a group of very talented tight ends, but the beginning of the season bias in that list is so rampant. The only one I'd say that has an argument that he was better than Dalton Kincaid is Michael Mayer. And that's just to make the list is what I'm saying. He, he had an exceptional year. Um, and he does have some things like when I said Dalton Kincaid is number two in total touchdowns for tight ends, that's he's right behind Michael Mayer. So, but outside of that, it is astonishingly horrendous that <laughs> Dalton Kincaid did not make this list. And you know, you look at that and you wonder to yourself, okay, well, you know, stats aren't everything. And and if anyone has watched this channel for more than a day, you guys would know I agree with that sentiment a hundred percent. And you probably know what I'm going to go to next is how important PFF grades are, right? So when it comes to PFF grades, what we've got to look at is tight ends in college football, right? So for tight ends in college football, um, when you look at the, the, the total leaders in grading, the leaders are Michael Mayer at number one, Joshua Lingenfelter at Army at number two, Kyle Patterson at Air Force at number three, and Dalton Kincaid at number four. Now think about that, guys. Notre Dame, independent. Army, not power five. Air Force, not power five. Dalton Kincaid is the number one graded power five tight end in the country this year. And it is honestly just the, the people that, that made this the finalist list should be embarrassed by how ridiculous this is, right? And you look on this lick list, Brock Bowers isn't even the highest graded tight end at Georgia, much less in the country, dude. And he's very high on the list. Brock Bowers is very good, but he's not even like, it, it's all about the eye test with Brock Bowers. That's the only reason he got on this list. He is an exceptional athlete, but there is no reason that his, his eye test is any better than Dalton Kincaid's. It's a little crazy. I I just think, you know, I really hope we remember this moment. I feel like I've never felt like someone got cheated out of something more than Dalton Kincaid got cheated out of this. And then to, to tack it on, on top of every single reason that I've already said why he should be on the list, 
at the beginning of the year, he was basically the number two tight end to Brent Keithy, who, in my opinion, for that first three games or so, was right up there with any tight end in the country as being the best. And so it's just wild to me that, that you know, Dalton Kincaid is not, not on this list, especially when you count the Sam Laporta got put into this list. He's very good, but he's not even close to being on Dalton Kincaid's level. And that's all I'll talk about with Dalton Kincaid. I think the guy is going to be a very high draft pick. I think he's going to have an exceptional NFL career. I'm sorry they snubbed him here, but I hope he goes out there conference championship week and bowl season and really makes the people that made these this decision pay and really shows them that he is not even close to being competed with for the best tight end in the country spot. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about that conference championship. All right, so Utah has officially made the conference championship. Really big deal, guys. There were a few things that needed to happen. So Utah needed to beat Colorado. Felt pretty clear that was going to happen, and it did. Big time beat down. Utah got 60-plus points. Colorado put up 14 garbage time points. You know, Utah creamed them, smashed them out the park. UCLA needed to beat Cal, which felt like it was going to happen. But to be fair, UCLA almost lost that game. It was looking a little close for a minute. Had me scared for damn sure. That was that was a scary one. I, I'm sure you guys watching felt the same way. Did not like how that one went down. Um, then Oregon needed to get beat by Oregon State. If you watched this damn game, guys. You must have been jumping out of your seat like me. That What a wild ride that was, dude. They were down like 21, 24 points in like the third quarter. Oregon fans, if I was an Oregon fan, I feel like, all right, let's just milk the clock out. Let's get out of here. We're going to the conference championship, probably the Rose Bowl. And then Oregon State said, no, nah, not today, bro. Not, not today in Corvallis. That's not going to happen. And they came back, one of the wildest comebacks in a rivalry game that I've ever seen, and just laid it to them, just momentum like crazy, laid the wood, got it done. Oregon State beat them 38-34. And then I'm sure you guys were all on the edge of your seat, right? Once that Oregon State game was a win, I felt real good. I felt, I felt like 70-30 chance that Washington was going to win. And watching that game, Michael Penix was on fire, killing it, lit it up against Washington State, and, you know, pulled off the win. It was close for a while, but eventually Washington State kind of pulled it away. I mean, Washington kind of pulled it away. And now Utah is going to the conference championship. Super cool. I mean, that was such a fun day of football. I'm sure you guys are with me. Such a great day of football. I had an awesome time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I thought that was that was pretty pretty dang cool. <laughs> and now let's go ahead and talk about the breakdown for the conference championship game. All right, guys, let's talk about that conference championship game. USC is currently number four in the CFP, which means that if they were to beat Utah, they will almost certainly move on to the college football playoff. So very exciting opportunity for USC, but an even more exciting opportunity for Utah to play spoiler, to go in there and crash the party, dude. We already crashed it for them once this season. How awesome would it be to just be the the only reason the two losses USC has this year is because of Utah, and we are just the undeniable reason that they are not going to the college football playoff. For me... To do that to the greatest team that money can buy uh, would be awesome. And the reason I call USC the greatest team that money can buy is without NIL, this team would not have been made possible. So this team is brought to you by NIL. Uh, that's <laughs> definitely how that works. So, And when I say that, I'm being kind of cute, but the truth is, I mean, this was a team that was thrown together with a lot of money, a lot of investment, and I'm not even hating on that. I'm just saying, honestly, when you talk about the resources that USC had to put this team together, compared to the resources that Utah had to put their team together, it's not even close. USC had significantly higher resources than Utah had, and you know, it, there's a lot of talent on that USC team, but this Utah team has already beat USC, and I think after last week against Colorado, 
we have just such a great vibe going. I know Oregon was a rough game. I know Cam looked really bad against Oregon. But as bad as he looked against Oregon, I know Colorado blows right up there with one of the worst teams in college football. But he looked fantastic against Colorado. I mean, he just looked ready to go out there and kill it. The whole team looked good. And I think it was a really good, like, get right, tune up sort of game. You know, get your head on straight. So I think that's a really good sign for Utah. So when we talk about, um, uh, what is what is it? So strength of schedule. When we talk about strength of schedule for the two teams. So Utah played the 28th hardest strength of schedule and USC played the 36th hardest strength of schedule. So Utah actually did play a slightly more difficult schedule than USC, you know, which that those are pretty damn close. I would just say when we look at these numbers, if there's numbers that look really even, um, then I would give it a slight edge to Utah because of the strength of schedule, where the same thing applies where if it's numbers that, that look slightly in USC's favor, I would say it's about even when you consider the strength of schedule. I hope all that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, talking about the teams, let's go ahead and break down the stats for everything. So the first thing we're going to look at is Utah's rankings in the different categories. So first off, opponent points per game for Utah. That's going to be number 23 in the country. So very good there at 21.3 points per game. You know, Utah has done a fantastic job on defense this year and really, really impressed me. And when we look at that number, I think the most important thing to remember about it is going to be that Utah uh, at that number 23 at 21.3 game uh, points per game had some rough games mixed into there, right? This defense really didn't start to hit their stride until well into this season. Right? There were some times where I remember making a post one time um, during it was in the first half of the USC game because I was right after UCLA. And I just said, dude, why aren't we just onside kicking it? I mean, I've never seen the defense play as bad as they did for that game and a half stretch. And then they just that second half against USC, they just turned it on, man, and became a new squad. You know, they looked ready to go out there and just be playmakers. So that was really, really awesome. The other thing Utah's got going for it is opponents yards per game, um, which for Utah, uh, having opponent yards per game at number 25 in the country at 338.7. Again, it's the same idea as the points per game is that that number's inflated, like negatively inflated because of the fact that we had so many rough games in those categories, right? And I think when you consider that, you should be excited, dude. I mean, if you look at us over the second half of this year, like once we really got our heads on straight, you know, not including Florida, not including the first half against USC, not including the UCLA game, that number is so much higher than that, right? Like that number would look so much better. Like the fact that the second half of this year has been where that defense stepped up and got it done should give you guys a lot of uh, a lot of optimism. All right, the next thing is let's move to Utah's uh, rushing statistics. So Utah's rushing statistics at rushing yards per game. Utah gets 117.5. Oh wait, this is opponent rushing yards per game. 117.5 uh, opponent rushing yards per game allowed. That's very low, right? Barely breaks 100. And there's a few games in there, like I just, you know, hinted at, that raise that number quite a bit. And then opponent passing yards per game. Uh, opponent passing yards per game is 221, so number 53 in the country. So that's pretty decent. You know, it's weird when you look at those numbers because watching the Utah defense, you wouldn't think that this is the case. But we have a very good run defense team and an above average pass defense team. But it, at times, it can feel like we have a very poor run defense team. It is it's quite odd. <laughs> but anyway, so that is the, the defense for Utah there. Let's go ahead and talk about the offense. So Utah offense rushing yards per game is at 217.6 rushing yards per game. 
They're number 10 in the country at rushing yards per game. So quite high there. You know, one of the better rushing teams in the entire country. And don't forget, that's against a pretty tough strength of schedule. We've got a really good backfield. And the other thing to count in there is Tavion's out. And I know a lot of you guys think that's a huge blow. I really don't think it is, man. I feel like as much as I've really felt for Tavion and, and hoped he would figure things out, he's been more of a distraction than he has been an addition for this team this year, right? I think this could be a blessing in disguise that Tavion's not playing. I'm not saying I'm hoping for him, like bad things for him. I'm just being honest. It has been, it ha it's made it so we can't really you know, get the ball rolling with a specific running back because Tavion's been so damn hot and cold. All right, and then passing yards per game, we're at 238.2 yards per game. That's number 53 in the country. So we're very good there, um, you know, of, of, at least above average there. And that's kind of the same story, right, with Cam. Some of the best games I've seen from a quarterback in college football in general. Like the USC game, he was on fire. It was funny, everyone was talking about Caleb Williams, but... Cam looked amazing that night. So if he can have one of his big games, our passing game should be just fine. But we are just barely above average there at passing yards per game. Uh, we got to hope the run game comes in and does well. And then when it comes to scoring on offense, we are at 36.4 points per game, which is a really good sign, guys. 36.4 points per game. That's really impressive, guys. That means we're averaging over 36 points per game. I know I just said that, but it's like, it really is impressive. It's, it means we have one of the better offenses in the entire country. That's number 14 in the country. So along with a banging defense, we've got a banging offense. I mean, I'd go as far as to say, when you look around the country, you'd be hard-pressed to find three to five teams that are more balance than we are when it comes to being really good on offense and really good on defense. I mean, we, we're going to hit you both. I mean, it's not like your offense is going to run up the scoreboard on us and it's not like your defense is going to be able to shut us down. I think that's, you know, a really good sign for Utah and especially how we've been looking recently, very recently outside of that one game against Oregon, you, you should feel very good about this. So 36.4 points per game for Utah and then yards per game for Utah with the 28th toughest schedule in the country is 455.8 yards per game. So very good there. That's number 23 in the country. So again, another top 25 statistic for Utah. There's also yards per play. We're number 19 points per play. We're number 14. I mean, a bunch of good there. Third down conversion percentage, we're at 50.36%, number eight in the entire country. I mean, honestly, this team really looks good, guys. This is going to be a good squad. You guys got to be excited about what Utah could accomplish. I know you guys know they're a good squad, but anyone thinking that USC is the favorite to me, is, is a, that's a little wild. You haven't been watching Utah. You really haven't. I mean, when you look at that, right, Cam had the bad game. But you can look at that game as the bad game from Cam, or you could flip that, and you could look at that game as a game where our defense got punched in the mouth, got put up against the wall, and said, give me your lunch money, and our defense slapped them in the mouth, pushed them off, and beat the crap out of them. You get what I mean? Our defense would not be bullied by this Oregon team that wanted to run the ball, that wanted to bully us. They stood strong. They held their ground, and they got the damn job done, dude. It was, it was pretty impressive by, uh, by our team here. So really awesome there. And now let's go ahead and move on and talk about uh, USC's, USC's team coming into this game. All right, guys. So now let's talk about USC. USC's got a lot going for them, guys. It's kind of the story you'd expect. Uh, average to below average defense with an extremely high-powered offense. They really are a very good offensive team, guys. Taking them lightly, I doubt we're taking them lightly. It sounds like we have nothing but respect for high-powered this team is. Again, this is the best team money could buy. You know, this is the best team money could buy. Um, points per game, USC is at 42.5 points per game. That is number three in the country. 
I don't know for sure, but I would guess that's number one in the power five. That is extremely good. Like I said, this team has been put together with a lot of resources, and they bring a high-powered offense, but we can't make excuses, right? They found a way to put this team together. We got to find a way to stop them and overcome it. So, again, 42.5 points per game at number three in the country. You know, we had a very good point points per game at 36.4, but 42.5, I mean, you're over 42 points a game. That's pretty wild. That's a lot of points. Then yards per game, just as impressive, 506.8 yards per game average. That's number four in the country. Incredibly talented team, guys. We are not going to shut this team out, right? Holding this team to under 400 yards would be a very big accomplishment. That'd be like very, I'm not saying we can't do it. I think that'd be absolutely reasonable for us. We're a very good team and we'll ball control them, right? We have an ability to ball control that not a lot of teams do. Um, but I think that's going to be kind of where we're hoping for is under 400 yards this game. And I'll kind of give my prediction later, but let's keep going. Points per play, very good as well. Oh, and their yards per game, 506.8, number four in the country. Uh, points per play, uh, 0.595 points per play. That's number three in the country. That's basically every 12, 13 plays, they score a touchdown. That's the idea. And every six plays, they get a field goal. It's pretty impressive. Every five plays, basically, they get a field goal. Yards per play, 7.1 yards. Third down conversion, 55.32. That's number two in the country. All these stats are basically top five. And then fourth down conversion, they're number 12 at 66.67. Here's one stat where their offense is not as high-powered as you think is red zone scoring. And I remember that with us, right, in the second half of that USC game. Um, red zone scoring percentage is only at 85.07, which is number 51 in the country. That's still pretty damn high. But if you can take advantage of that and really beef up when they get in your red zone, you, you can do a lot there. All right, the next thing is rushing yards per game. They're above average here at 184.2. That's number 42 in the country. So it's a very it's a good number, but I would say that's not their strong suit. It's definitely throwing the ball, and they did lose their really talented running back uh, a little earlier in the season. So we you know we we could hold them. I think holding them to under 150, 125 would be a good goal there. That that should set us up for success. I would even say 100, 125. Let's keep them under 125. This should be a good goal. And then passing yards per game, 322.6 passing yards per game. That puts them at number seven in the country. You know, they're a very high-powered passing attack. I'm actually surprised that passing yards per game isn't a little higher. They really are a high-powered team with a great quarterback. I think when I look at that number, I think – a really good accomplishment. I mean, Caleb Williams has been pretty special. I think keeping them under 300 passing yards would be a very reasonable and achievable goal. So that's that's how I'd look at that. If we can keep them under that, that'll be a good sign of how we're doing. All right, then uh, let's talk about the defense for USC. A lot of good on this defense, just like or a lot of good on this defense, just like the offense, but a lot of bad too. You guys are going to see this as we go through these numbers. They're they're We'll take a look. <laughs> All right, so opponent points per game, they're at 26.3. So that's number 58 in the country. So that's average. They're like maybe even slightly above average there. Um, they're a decent team not allowing points. And part of that is their really good turnover margin. They they do a good job at forcing you to turn the ball over. And when you look at that, it makes sense, right? That's why – and then match that with the other number, opponent yards per game. 405.3 yards per game, number 87 in the country. The yards per game allowed is a little different than their points per game allowed, right? Like the points per game, decent. Yards per game, not very good. So one of the keys is going to be to not turn the ball over. They do a good job of that. Uh, opponent points per play, they're right in the middle at number 64. Uh, some of these stats are bad, though. Opponent yards per play. They're number 101 in the country. Opponent third down conversion, number 106, which our team is very good at third down conversion. You know, that's not a good sign for them. <laughs> okay. Uh, opponent fourth down conversion, number 98. So they, they're they not a very good clutch defense, but they are decent in the red zone, above average here. 
at 80.4%, number 40 in the country. Now, opponent rushing yards per game, they allow 142.4 rushing yards per game, which is number 48 in the country. That's, you know, it's above average. It's pretty good. It's surprisingly good run defense. Um, the number one spot where they struggle is opponent passing yards per game. And I'll, I'll be fair to them where this is 262.8 at number 104 in the country. Um, I'll be fair to them in the fact that part of this is because of how much their offense puts up. I'm sure they make a lot of other teams one dimensional, right? But that, when you consider that, that also means their opponent rushing yards per game is probably artificially lower. So I wouldn't take too much stock in that, but I would, I would say, you know, that, that it's not, what would it be that some of these numbers there, some of like that opponent passing yards per game is a little skewed, but it makes the other numbers look better. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. The big thing for USC, and I'm sure you guys have heard this a lot is their turnover margin. The USC defense opponent turnover margin per game is negative 1.8. Turnover margin per game for the offense is 1.8. Both those numbers are number one in the country. So they don't turn the ball over and they make you turn the ball over a lot. So the trick is to try to get them to force some mistakes and try to not make mistakes when you're on offense. That's going to be really important. I think we did such a good job of that at the you know later second half, uh, second quarter, and the the second half of that first USC game. So if we can do all that, it should be a really good a really good start for us. All right, now let's talk about the final prediction. What do I actually think is going to happen in this game? So first off, I think like I touched on with USC, some of those numbers like opponent passing yards per game are actually probably a little better than the number said. Just like for Utah, the actual passing yards per game for the offense are probably a little better than the numbers say there. For me, I feel like we have one of the better passing offenses in the country. There's just been some off games, right? Florida, uh, the, the Oregon game. There's been a couple there. And there's also part of that is that we've gotten up pretty big on a lot of teams and just run the ball. So... Let's talk about the game. So what I thought was a fun exercise, I took opponent yards per game, opponent points per game for each defense and matched it up against the offense's points per game and yards per game. So if we take the average number of yards that Utah um, usually gets and take the average number of yards the USC usually allows, Utah should be looking... So. Utah gets usually about 455.8 yards per game, and USC usually allows 405 yards per game. So right in the middle of those two, Utah should be looking at about 430 yards per game. And then points per game for Utah, 36.4 is the average, and USC's average points allowed per game is 26.3. So we take the average of those two, 31.3. So Utah, just on the surface level, I'll get a little more detailed in this in a minute, but at the surface level, Utah should put up 31.3 points. So you round down 31 points and 430 yards right there. Sounds about right. That doesn't sound unrealistic. I'd imagine just looking at those numbers, uh, probably about 125 passing yards or 125 rushing yards. Not that we couldn't do more, right? Actually, I'll, I'll talk about those in a minute. First, I want to finish breaking this down. So Utah against USC's offense should track to get about 31.3 points and 430 yards at the surface level. Now, USC's offense gets 42.5 points per game, where Utah's defense usually allows about 21.3 points per game. So the average there between those two is actually slightly higher than what Utah's looking to score this game. So it'd be 31.9, you round up, that'd be about 32 points. Then on offense for yards per game, USC's actually looking to average a little less than Utah's, which is kind of funny there. So yards per game for USC, they're, uh, they're at 506, but Utah's yards per game allowed by their defense is really good at 338. So you get the average there. 
of 422. I hope you guys are keeping up with me. It's literally, I'm just taking the opponent yards per game for Utah and taking it against USC's offensive yards per game. And I've been doing that with all the categories. That's where I get the 31.3 for Utah points per game, for, uh, 430 yards per game for Utah that they should get against USC. USC should get 31.9 uh, points per game and 422 yards per game. I hope you guys are keeping up with that. Now, let's factor in the fact that Utah has played a very slightly tougher schedule. Not much tougher, but slightly tougher, right? And at that point, when you're at the very higher end, it's, it, it, can be a, it can be a factor. And I feel like Utah, is feast, uh, Utah has had some great games against the week, and so has USC. So that, that can't be the factor. Now, so they're about a good chunk difference in strength of schedule. So how I look at that, I'm going to bump Utah up to 34 points per game, and I'm going to give a slight deduction to USC. I'm going to put them at 31 points per game. I think that's pretty fair. I don't think I'm doing anything outside the box here. So that's going to be my prediction. That is not the prediction I went into this video thinking, but that's I feel like that's kind of what the numbers are telling me here. So 34 points per game for Utah and 31 points for USC. Just so you guys know, beforehand, I thought the score was going to be 38 to 31 for Utah. That was going to be my prediction. But this has told me a different story, and I'm going to stick with this. So once we adjust for strength of schedule, Utah is at 34, USC is at 31. I like that. That's my guess at how this game goes. Should be a hell of a matchup. I think Utah, let's talk about the breakdown here. So, like I said, Utah should get about 430. I also think we adjust that a little bit too. Honestly, before I get out of here, let's, I say we adjust that a little bit. I think USC probably looking at about 405 yards in this game when you adjust for Utah playing a slightly tougher schedule. And then, uh, you know, I already bumped them down in points per game. And then I would say Utah probably looking at about 450 yards this game or let's say 445 yards this game and like I said 34 points this game so how, how do those yards break out so for USC I see them doing 340 passing yards and I see them getting what's the difference there 60 ah, maybe that's a little little too low on the rushing yards so let's say 325 passing and let's say uh, 80 rushing. I think that's about right. That's really how I could see those yards breaking out. And then for Utah, how I see it going is I think we're going to need to throw the ball. This offense for USC is going to score, right? 31 points is not a small amount. So we're going to probably going to lean towards the throw game here. So I'm going to say 275 passing for Utah. We take 275 passing away from 445 total. <laughs> Sorry, guys, a little impromptu here, but all right. So 445 minus 275, 170 left over. So 170 rushing for Utah. Just to recap with you guys, I know there's a lot of info. So strength of schedule adjusted predicted scores, 34 for Utah, 31 for USC. I see Utah winning 34-31. With Utah having 445 yards, 275 passing, 175 rushing. And then I see USC uh, with that 31 points. They're going to get 405 yards, 325 passing, and 85 rushing. That's how I see the game going, guys. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. I'm on vacation out here. Uh, I'm having a good time, and uh, but I wanted to make sure you guys had a video before I got out of here. I am excited for this conference championship game. It should be a great time. I hope this gave you guys a little bit of insight. I'm out of here. Go Utes.